Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, January 19th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, Alex Jones gives his take on American Sniper. Then, the dangers of smart cars and how there is no inflation unless you actually do things. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. A nation of sheep will be ruled by what? Oh, woofies. Do you remember the last time Obama wheeled up a Trojan horse that was labeled affordable and it turned out to be a massive tax? That was the last time he was going to do something for the middle class. That was his affordable health care. Tomorrow night, he's going to go before that useless appendage, that anachronism we call Congress, and he's going to tell them what his new plans are. Remember when you hear this, that it was going to only be a small tax. It was going to help make things affordable. They were going to bring down the price of insurance, and yet you're going to be taxed 1% of your income this year if you didn't sign up for Obamacare. And many people will find that even that 1% of their income is going to be cheaper than to pay the inflated insurance cost that he set up for his crony capitalist buddies. But we're going to see what he unveils tomorrow night. It looks like it's going to be new taxes. That's what everybody is saying. That's what the Obama administration has leaked out. President Obama plans to call for billions in tax increases on, he says now, top earners, including a hike in investment tax rates in order to help fund the new tax credits and other measures that the White House says will help the middle class. The president's proposals also include eliminating a tax break on inheritance. We're going to talk about that a little bit, but pay attention to this. He says it's going to be a $320 billion tax increase. Now it's kind of hard to get your head around numbers like $320 billion. We talk about trillions of dollars so often. Just to give you an idea of how much of a tax increase that is, if you look at the gross domestic product of 193 countries, that's all the countries in the world, only 33 of them have a gross domestic product that is bigger than the tax increase that Obama is proposing. That's taxes that are going to go to the federal government. But don't worry, they tell you that they're going to redistribute that to the middle class. I wouldn't count on it. To give you an idea, too, of some of the countries that have gross domestic products that are $320 billion or less, countries like Denmark, Israel, Finland, Hong Kong, Greece, Ireland, Portugal, New Zealand. So the amount of those countries' gross domestic product is what he's proposing just in tax increases. But of course, the centerpiece of this is going to be an inheritance tax. But before we talk about that, this is sold by the New York Times as finance cuts for the middle class. They say it's the latest indication that the president, untethered from political constraints, that's right, he's untethered from political constraints, he's untethered from the Constitution. They say after Democrat losses in the midterm elections, he's moving to aggressively set the terms of the discussion as he pushes audacious moves in other areas like immigration and relations with Cuba. Exactly. Even the New York Times, which is advocating for Obama, calls these moves audacious, saying that he's marking out his territory, that he no longer feels constrained. Precisely. That's the point. And when they talk about how they're going to do this for the middle class, remember that it was just a few months ago that a Democratic consultant sent out talking points to the Democrats before the elections, telling them, don't talk about the middle class, talk about the working class, because nobody is identifying as being working uh, middle class anymore. Everybody is starting to see themselves as poor than middle class. They pointed out in this memo, this was something that was put out on prospect.org. They said, in today's harsh economic realities, wrote the Democratic consultant, many voters no longer identify as middle class. And he pointed to a Pew poll that in 2008 said 53% thought they were middle class, 25% thought they were lower class. Now, the middle class has shrunk from 53 to 44%. And those who identify themselves as lower class has grown, grown from 25% to 40%. Not a coincidence, really. When you look at the fact that Obama said he wasn't going to raise taxes on people uh, that were low income, and yet look at what has happened to the middle class just with Obamacare, just with that tax, as the Supreme Court called it. But of course, there is no inflation unless you look at the taxes, unless you look at the food costs, water costs, live in a house, get sick, go to school, or do taxes. That's an article that came out on Infowars.com this last weekend. And in that article, they showed some of the items. Food at home has gone up 3.7%. Meat, 12.7%. 
Fish and seafood, 5.6%. Eggs, 10.7%. Milk, 5.2%. Now, you understand at the same time we're talking about massive deflation in commodities worldwide. In Bloomberg's measurement of 26 commodities since 2011, just in three years, those commodities have gone down 47%. That's all commodities that they're looking at, not just oil. 26% of that decline has come in the last six months. So we're seeing a massive decline in the price of commodities, which is kind of an indication of people increasing production, building new capacity, new businesses. And yet, at the other hand, we're seeing a massive increase in consumer prices and in things like taxes. It's starting to look like the stagflation that we saw last one of the times that oil was manipulated the way that it's being manipulated right now. And of course, that was in the late 70s. Now, the White House is also saying, as I mentioned, he's going before the Congress, which increasingly is, in reality, a useless vestial appendage, an anachronism. And he says as much with his legislation about the Internet. It's not just immigration and it's not just taxes. It's everything that Obama does. They're useless in that. In this article that came out from Reuters over the weekend, the White House says that net neutrality legislation is not needed. Why? because he says the FCC already owns the internet. They already have the right to make all the decisions about that. Just understand that he's going to use the EPA, a regulatory agency that is not directly elected by the people, is not accountable to the people. It is a perpetual bureaucracy that writes regulations faster than Congress could write laws. He's going to use the EPA to enact his climate change legislation. He's going to use the FCC to enact internet control. And he may use the IRS to shut down entire industries. We'll have to see what he's going to do. But the question remains, if Obama can assert his powers that he doesn't have any legitimate authority for, why can't we, as individuals, assert the powers that we not only have the God-given right to, but that are explicitly recognized in the Constitution? One Indiana state representative has done just that. He has introduced a bill that would repeal laws requiring a license to carry a handgun, supporting what many people call constitutional carry, going back to our right under the Second Amendment to have firearms for our own protection. The state representative is going to get rid of the existing laws, he hopes, that would require a license to carry a gun. In Indiana, state law currently requires a person to have a license in order to carry a handgun in their car or on themselves in Indiana. He says, this is geared to the innocent person. I want to remove one more obstacle in the path so that they can defend themselves. Understand that innocent people shouldn't have to get permission from the government to protect themselves. If the government wants to take away the rights of criminals, certainly incarcerating somebody when they are convicted of something is taking away their rights. Taking away their rights to have a handgun, I don't have a problem with that. If it's a violent crime, there's many things that are felonies that shouldn't be felonies, and we're going to be talking about that in the next segment. Obama is going to increase a whole new sector of activities, make them felonies that currently are misdemeanors or not even crimes. But nevertheless, if somebody is a legitimate violent criminal, I don't have a problem with somebody taking away their, with the government taking away their right to own a handgun. But if you have to go to the government to ask for a handgun permit, it is no longer a right. It is now a privilege. And we need to start understanding what our rights are and asserting our privilege, our rights to you our right to use those rights, or we're going to lose them. Another example of this is in Arkansas, where we see that a government agency there has taken away seven homeschool children from a family, not because they did anything to harm the children, but because the father was in possession of an unapproved FDA supplement. That's it. See, if in a tyranny, and I guess we could say one definition of a tyranny, is the fact that everything is prohibited unless expressly permitted by the government. In this particular case, it's a supplement. And you know what? It really doesn't matter what this supplement is. It really doesn't matter whether this supplement is effective or not. And it's really pretty immaterial to where these children are because the father was not using it with the children. He was only using it with himself. Nevertheless, they kidnapped his children. As medicalkidnap.com points out, seven homeschool children of Hal and Michelle Stanley were removed during the night by DHS, DHS, Department of Homeland Security, enforcing something that is an unapproved FDA supplement? Do you see how the bureaucratic tyranny is coming together in a full spectrum, in a full cover? So you've got DHS doing a fully armed 
uh, raid of this family with sheriffs the past week simply because they reportedly found a supplement in the home that was not approved by the FDA. The father says the father was the only one taking it and that they also used it to purify water in their garden. The family has nine children, two of whom have already graduated and gone on to college. It says that they have avoided most contact with the government. They keep to themselves. They're generally self-sustained, and they consider themselves to be preppers. Yeah. And, of course, and if you look at that article, there's 106,000 deaths each year from FDA-approved drugs, zero from FDA-unapproved supplements. But, of course, we can't have people who educate their own children, who take care of themselves, who don't rely on other people. That's what makes them dangerous. Now, at the beginning of the show, I talked about how Obama is going to unveil his new taxes for us to make our life more affordable. But in the next segment, we're going to talk about some new laws about the Internet and some draconian laws at that. So stay with us. We'll be right back. He's going to introduce that in tomorrow night's State of the Union as well. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is, it's hard, even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food and our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high-quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. Well, a new study has shown that Facebook likes can reveal your personality. And of course, we've known this for some time, as well as Facebook's connections to the CIA. But this new study from Cambridge University's Psychometrics Center looked at the questionnaires from 86,000 Facebook users, then cross-referenced that to what they liked on their Facebook accounts, data mining essentially their personality breaking it down into five types. Those five types are openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And of course, we know that they can get much more specific than just five general personality characteristics. We've seen many studies and many indications that they can determine who their political enemies are. And as Julian Assange points out, Facebook is like having every one of your friends wearing a wire. And the government can take that data, they can determine who their enemies are, they can misconstrue that data, as they did in the case of Barrett Brown, and persecute those that they feel are threats to their power. They don't just passively monitor what you're doing, they also try to actively 
change the way you think about things. And of course, long before social media, there was that traditional way of doing it called the movies, called Hollywood. And there's a report today on Wired Magazine about the new movie, Black Hat. This fellow who works for Wired Magazine, he's actually one of their contributing editors, said, why I hope Congress never watches Black Hat, the movie. He says, it wasn't until this week, Tuesday evening to be exact, that my anxiety over the timing of the movie set in. That's when the White House released its legislative proposal to reform U.S. computer crime policy in reaction to the Sony breach. President Obama plans to formally announce at the State of the Union next Tuesday, that's tomorrow night, but the details are now public and many of those details are troubling. Under current laws, some hacks that are now misdemeanors will become felonies. Furthermore, CFAA violations would qualify for prosecution under the mob-busting RICO statute, meaning that, for example, if a member of Anonymous is busted in a petty denial of service attack, he or she might now be held legally accountable for every cyber crime that Anonymous has committed. More disturbingly, the proposal includes sweeping language that directly impairs even legitimate security work. And he points out the timing of this is very troubling to him. Understand, and he points out that the director of this movie, Michael Mann, and he talks about what a big fan he was of Miami Vice, understand that Michael Mann has worked for the government before. Miami Vice sold civil asset forfeiture under the drug war. They sold that as fun and games for the police. Remember when Crockett and Tubbs were driving around in these exotic cars and boats that they had stolen from people? That made civil asset forfeiture not only acceptable and normal to the general public, but it made it cool. And so now Michael Mann is selling just in time a new movie that is showing the dangers of hacking, just as Obama wants to make brand new felonies and add those to the criminal list. This is something we should all be very concerned about, and especially when we look at how they're using the Sony interview to justify new legislation, new internet controls. Just today, the federal government has come out and said, hey, we knew all along about this hack in uh, North Korea. We've been following them since 2010, so we knew they were going to do this, we just didn't stop them. When they say that, when they say that they had embedded themselves into North Korea and that's how they knew that the attacks were coming from North Korea, they've just admitted, if that's true, that they committed a false flag. When you know that something is going to happen, when you know there's going to be some kind of an attack or a terrorist event, and you not only don't stop it, but you allow it to happen and use it for your policy advantages as they're doing, that's one definition of a false flag. Now they're going into this uh, mode trying to say that they had hacked uh, North Korea five years ago. They're saying that because every other cyber security expert, including McAfee, came out this weekend and said, no, it wasn't North Korea, it was somebody else. Desperate to sell the lie, they have unwittingly made themselves into the authors of a false flag attack. But it's not just taking people's data and exposing it or stealing their credit card information. When we go to cyber warfare, there is real physical danger. One of the ways that that can be illustrated is with a cyber hack of a car. Basically, people can be assassinated if you take over what is currently available in the cars today. Now, it's not been easy to do that because you had to have physical access to the cars, but it's becoming more and more easy to get into the cars by remote, wirelessly. This is an article on Infowars.com today, The Next Frontier of Hacking, Your Car. They say most hacks haven't done any physical damage yet. Well, that's assuming that we don't count the people that uh, Richard Clark had mentioned when we we're talking about the Michael Hastings attack, assuming that uh, the government hasn't already used this to cause runaway acceleration in somebody's car, to cause them to have an accident, to deploy the airbags by remote control. That's the sort of thing that can be done with these hacks. And assuming that that hasn't already been done, this is what may be done in the future as we go wireless. They say modern day automobiles already contain dozens of computer systems to handle a wide variety of functions. They are frequently linked together on shared networks and until recently, it didn't create much of a hacking risk because you needed to have physical access to the car. But now that they're being connected, and of course that was one of the big issues with the Detroit Motor Show. They were talking about new power plants, connectivity, 
and autonomy for the cars. And that connectivity, connecting to the internet constantly in your car, as well as connecting to adjacent cars with the now mandated vehicle to vehicle communications that will start appearing on the, on, be mandated on all cars in just a few years, that is going to make all cars very vulnerable. As they point out, in one attack, they've already been able to insert a malicious music file that if played on the car's stereo, would let hackers gain control of the car's computer systems. In another, they demonstrated that they could hack into the diagnostic equipment used by auto mechanics using Wi-Fi. So in just a couple of years, with all cars having mandated vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, how difficult would it be for somebody to send bogus information that would make a car think that a collision was imminent, that it would take drastic action, deploying airbags, swerving off the road, whatever. Very easy to do that with vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. We're going to have to wait and see exactly what happens. But already today, we have systems throughout the cars that can be hacked, that can be used to cause cars to crash. Now, right after the break, Alex Jones is going to be joining us to talk about American Sniper. It's not just Black Hat, and it's not just a Sony interview that they're using to propagandize and change public opinions, and it's never been more painfully obvious. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12, Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The Molon Lave Silver Coin, certified by the Provident Mint. This one ounce silver round is 0.999% fine silver, inspired by the legendary Spartan King Leonidas and his refusal to lay down arms in defiance of Emperor Xerxes. Molon Lave, that's Greek for come and take it. This is available now at InfoWarsStore.com. Act now as supplies are limited. And don't forget, free shipping and a free gift. That's InfoWarsStore.com. And finally tonight on InfoWars Nightly News, we're going to break down and analyze what is some of the most thought-provoking propaganda that we have ever seen in 20 years of operation. I'm talking, of course, about the blockbuster film that made over $105 million on its opening weekend, produced and directed by Hollywood icon of icons, legend, Clint Eastwood. I've been a big fan of Clint Eastwood since I grew up watching Spaghetti Westerns with my folks. And uh, I agree with many of the political views of Clint Eastwood. That said, the film is very upsetting when you know the admitted facts surrounding Chris Kyle, the American sniper's life, and the book that he wrote so it would be produced into a Hollywood film. Please keep an open mind here because I'm not attacking Chris Kyle. I'm not attacking Clint Eastwood. I'm attacking a known Pentagon system that creates fables, that creates stories, that creates legends to manipulate the public mind. Now, before I get into the film itself and my review and breakdown, it's important to note that in a few minutes we'll play a clip of where I actually had a discussion with Chris Kyle shortly before he was killed outside Dallas, Texas. So I've talked to Mr. Kyle uh, on air, and I've also talked to some of his friends and family. But before I get into this current case, I want to look at some past cases where we've caught corrupt elements inside the Pentagon engaging in serious deception. First, let's look at the case of Pat Tillman, who I see as a real hero gave up a lucrative contract to go join his brother fighting who he believed was involved in the September 11th attacks. He began to ride home to family and friends 
saying this whole war is a fraud and we're helping them grow the drugs and it's a scam, I'm going to come home and expose it. Well, they executed him, then claimed he was a hero who died charging a machine gun nest fighting al-Qaeda. It later came out because the Army coroner wouldn't lie that he'd been killed by friendly fire in an apparent homicide. Now pay attention to this pattern. Pat Tillman was worth billions in Army and Pentagon recruiting money. They couldn't allow him to then turn against it, so he had to be taken out because this pattern repeats over and over again. Remember Private Jessica Lynch. It even came out that Jerry Bruckheimer, the Hollywood producer, was on sat phone directing how to save her at the hospital, which they knew the Iraqis had pulled out three days previous. They gave her credit for battling this column of Iraqis in her supply truck as the men cowered in fear. Well, the men began to speak out and say, we actually fought them. She hid in the back in fear. So not one, not two, not three, but four different members who were actually in the firefight all ended up dying, getting shot in the head, being found dead in their cars, being found in a puddle of water, because dead men tell no tales. Then Private Lynch went public in a press conference and said, it's all a fraud. I was told to lie, to put out a book, to put out a movie. They already had Hollywood deals to come out and show her as this hero, to recruit women into the military, and to sell the military on the idea of putting women in frontline combat. All I know is I don't believe that Jesse Ventura said you deserve to lose a few, but as soon as he said the thing on O'Reilly and stuff about, yeah, he said, you deserve to die. You guys deserve to die when the family's right there. That is made up, period. I knew it was bull then. I feel the opinion that he said exactly what I thought he heard, and I feel horrible about it coming out the way it had, and I'm sorry I handled it the way I did on your show. I, I guess I should have just denied it and said, I don't know what you're talking about. And again, right now, he sounds like a nice guy, so I'm completely blown away by this because Ventura sounds credible. You know, Kyle, you know, uh, you, you know, right now, sounds calm and nice. And I mean, I mean, I don't know what kind of psyop this is or what this is. Just as with Pat Tillman or with Jessica Lynch, when the asset, when the front man's story is compromised, they kill members of the unit who aren't playing ball or they kill the front person if they don't go along with it. Now, we don't know what really happened with Chris Kyle. But even before he was dead, we had reporters on the ground in Boston, and we had the surveillance footage that showed men wearing the uniform of his security company, Kraft International, with the Punisher symbol, with the blood dripping, wearing their uniforms and having black backpacks. And we never said that they were involved in the bombing. We surmised that they were probably called in to run security because there may have been intel that there was going to be a terror attack. The media then spun that and claimed that we were saying they were terrorists. So that let us know that we were on target, that they were putting this type of disinformation out. Then MSNBC came out claiming the Zarnab brothers bombed and that I had actually influenced them with no evidence. So you need to understand, anytime you get near Chris Kyle or Kraft International or, or anything they're involved in, there's massive controversy going on. And that's because we know Navy SEALs and private contractor groups made up of SEALs, like Blackwater and others, are used as intelligence group cutouts and a lot of time are used for patsies or decoys. Ladies and gentlemen, I live this. I didn't just debate Chris Kyle. I'm not just friends with Jesse Ventura. I didn't just cover the Boston bombing with our reporters on ground and break the major stories of what appeared to be Kraft International on the ground and then they wouldn't deny it. I lived here in Austin and saw with my own eyes the city shut down for much of a day while Chris Kyle's body was brought in to be buried and, and as he was built up as the ultimate hero. This thing has all the signs of scripting from the start to the finish, and it needs to be investigated to really discover who Chris Kyle was and why he was actually killed. This thing stinks to high heaven. And then you go and sit in the theater and watch the movie. And he loves Muslims and he wants to help them and he wants to get Al-Qaeda people to come join him to fight the terrorists. And he's such a sweet person that gets along great with his wife. 
when the court records show it's the opposite and they were divorced and he was setting up these companies to try to transfer uh, his assets into them. And none of it is true from our research, as best we can tell. It's just not true. He didn't call up crying when he had to shoot people. Uh, he was quoted in the news, in radio interviews, in TV interviews, saying that uh, the enemy are despicable savages and uh, that he only regrets he didn't kill more. He made those statements in his best-selling book, American Sniper. Now, look, I'm not criticizing him like Michael Moore is, saying that any sniper is a coward. Snipers are targeted. It's a very dangerous job, highly skilled. I don't think snipers are cowards. I think they're some of the best people in the military when it comes to pure skills. But Chris Kyle did like to brag about killing people. He did show a lot of unsavory traits that I haven't seen in other operators that I personally know who will not talk about the people they've killed. And the system will purge people that have been willing servants of the system like Chris Kyle. Did he get a conscience at the end? Was he deciding that he was going to come clean? We'll never know. Because now, sitting there in the movie theater, at the end, you get to see everyone cry when they show real footage of his funeral when he's buried like George Washington or something. This is part of living in this modern propaganda state. And people need to cut through the emotion and look at the cold, hard truth. It's propaganda and lies that's killing America. A truly moral nation has the high ground and doesn't need disinformation, doesn't need brainwashing to convince the population to go along with the government. The truth is America has been captured by offshore globalist interests, and we're losing our country. The real heroes are the men and women everywhere that stand up for our Bill of Rights and our Constitution and actually stand up for what the American flag symbolizes. As for Clint Eastwood, I hope this is just the fact that he's senile. But this film is so well done, I know that's not the truth. Clint Eastwood has decided to have the biggest hit of his life based on a lie. And in the end, I think it hurts his reputation. I think it hurts his legacy. And for that, I'm sad. Well, that's it for this extended uh, breakdown tonight of American Sniper. I'll be back tomorrow live on the radio, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time with a syndicated radio broadcast. And please never forget, if you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.